Welcome back everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about how to compile our first field. The last episode we talked about how to pre-process alias declaration, so now we're going to be talking about how to pre-process fields. But before we get into that, I just want to show you guys something. Something really cool just happened today. The language is done. Now, I mean, obviously, there's there's still a lot of stuff that I have to do. I have to add a lot more APIs, but I'm now at a point where I have an entire standard library, at least a basic amount. I also have a full multi-threading and task scheduling system that's added to the language. I also have primitives fully supported and a bunch of other stuff, and I've been doing other updates as well. So this is really exciting. Let's go into our compiler, and also, too, if... By the way, if you guys are curious about seeing some of the stuff that I've been up to with the standard library, I am going to go over it in a later episode. We're going to have to talk about it, but um, you can see here I have my standard library, and there's tons of stuff in here. Here's my multi-threading um, task scheduling library I just created. It's really cool. I know I'm getting a bit off topic, but this stuff is really cool. Um, so I can basically create like a task here, so I could say... This one's a bit convoluted. I can just say launcher and I can equal or I can set this launcher to a lambda and this code basically just runs in the background and I can say scheduled job dot join which is going to join to that thread that is executing until this job is finished. So like I said, if you guys are curious about, um, and I misspelled this word, LAU. If you guys are curious about learning about how this system works, uh, you can see here I have a lot of my multi-threading code and all this stuff works by the way, I've tested everything. So I have my basic code for multi-threading and then of course I have my task scheduling library that I created on my own. But yeah, so let's actually get into the video today. Um, all right, so if we go back to, or if we go to compile, we can go to pre-process. So the first thing we wanna do, why is my computer taking forever? First thing we want to do is when we uh, start processing our fields, we're going to do it, we're going to do global fields first. You don't, like when you're programming things, I always start from the outside in because it's always easier to do it that way because once you build the code for the outside, you're kind of reusing the same code over and over again. A perfect example of this is, so we're going to talk about how to process, at least for today's episode, global fields. But this preprocess var declaration function is also used when we call this preprocess class declaration. We just call the same function. So that's kind of an example of you want to do things from the outside in. So let's see how we actually do it. So first we actually do our basic setup. So this is the same setup we saw with alias. That's why I started that first because it'll cut down on time of this video. Uh, so you just want to check to see if you have your access type. You want to parse your variable access flags. We've already gone over that. For variables, I have a little bit of a different default access value. Um, meaning that like so if it's at global scope and we don't have public private or protected it's public and static and I call add if which basically I think we've gone over this before but it checks to see if it's there if it's not there then it adds that to the list um, but yeah so I also add static just in case and then I check for so if it's not a global scope I default it to public you want basically every field in the programming language to default to public access because in my experience, it seems like if you want a, something to be explicitly private, you should just have to say it's private and just assume everything else is public. Uh, so I have for so that so that's dot uh, for if we have access flags. Otherwise, if we don't, then I default it to public static if it's a global, or public if it's inside of a class or something. Um, and I think yeah okay. So I don't remember if. I showed you guys this code before, but the global scope code, all it does is just checks if the current type is equal to global scope, just in case if I didn't show that. And guys, I just want to mention too, uh, it's going to be kind of difficult for me to remember some of the things we have and haven't gone over. I'm going to do my best to make sure I don't repeat myself, but just keep in mind that this is a lot of code that I'm showing you guys, and it's it, there's a chance that I'm going to repeat myself, so just keep that in mind. Um, all right, so first thing we want to do is we want to create a preprocess var declaration helper. The reason why you want to do this, this is a helper function for creating variables because this is also used for creating subsequent variables. So if you have like um, a chained variables, so like if I go here, if I say, uh, so I have like this message string uh, of hi, I could say, um, I don't know, name, and then 
ID or something. I don't know, whatever. Like this is how you chain those fields together to process, pre-process those as well. So if we go back, um, so when we pre-process our variable declarations, we want to pass in the flags and the AST that it was defined in. And we want to try to get the name of the field. Now there's a chance that the name won't be the actual name. It'll be uh, the thread local value. So we're going to get the storage locality and default it to STL stack. That's going to basically say by default all fields are assumed to be on the stack. Uh, if it's not and it's a thread local, that means it's going to be on the thread. Now, technically speaking, from a memory standpoint, all of our fields and information is going to be on the stack. It's a bit of a it's kind of weird for me to explain it right now. We'll see it later, but yeah, um, if some of you guys are wondering. But we have that, so then after that we want to create like a temporary token and we want to pass it the name and we want to see if you know what, this is so stupid. I don't know why I'm doing this. You can just like say AST get token and just pass it in here. But basically you want to call the is storage type function and the name is going to be thread local. So if you guys remember, we have this is storage type when we're processing variables and there's a potential where if the current token is a storage type um, and then we check to see if the token after that is a variable declaration, meaning that it's a identifier and then a colon or whatever. We're going to have the storage type as the first part of the name. So uh, if that's the case, we want to set the locality to um, basically STL thread. But I created this string to STL, which basically you pass in a storage locality name and it's going to be thread local. But yeah, so I created that function. But yeah, it just returns the appropriate STL for our field. After that, we want to get the name, which is going to be after the thread local. We want to set it to static. Now, that's very important because by default, if you are a thread local field, even if you're, it doesn't matter where the field is defined, you're instantly going to default to static because that's how it's accessed. So we're going to just add that field or that flag. Uh, you want to do your standard metadata setup, uh, same as everything else. You want to create your previous field. Now, you guys, I mean, you've seen this code before. It's basically the same with every entity or every data entity we try to process. We check to see if it's been defined before. All we do is we just get the current scope, get the class, and then say, does this class have that field? Now, you do not want to check the base class. That's what this Boolean is. So you want to set that to false. And if we have the previous field, then we say previously defined field whatever is defined in scope or is already defined in the scope. And then you want to print the note based off of the previous field's metadata. And you say field whatever is previously defined here. Now, if it's not defined, then what you want to do is you want to basically just add the new field with the same stuff that we've seen everywhere else. You want to default it to untyped uh, because I think actually when we create these, no, that, that's okay. I guess you do have to pass in the type. Uh, so you want to set it to untyped instead of undefined because untyped means that the compiler hasn't yet gotten a chance to figure out what the type is. So uh, we just want to make sure we do that so that way we don't get weird errors. Um, you want to set up your basic things like your GUID name and everything else. Uh, then you want to set up your AST and who owns the class. So you want to get the current scope, get the class, and set that as the owner. Uh, now this is very inefficient. Uh, I'm getting the field every time. Ideally, you'd want to just take this field, store it in as like a local pointer variable, pass it here, and then use that variable for all of these. I don't know why I'm like getting the field every time. But you do that and you set the full name just like we do everywhere else. You get the owner uh, or you get the class's full name, put a dot, and then the name of the field. Once we do that, that's it. Um, then all we need to do is we just check to see if we have a sub AST of variable declaration. And the reason why I want to do that is because in when we're processing variable declarations, we're going to have other stuff that's in the way. We're going to have, um, you know, the type of the field. We're going to have the expression, whatever. So we're going to have other abstract syntax trees in the way. So we want to just for loop through all of the ASTs until we get to or until the current AST is AST variable declaration. That means that that's the starting point where we start creating all of our sub variables. Now, obviously, if we don't have any sub variables, uh, then we just don't go in this code here. Uh, so you want to set the start AST to the index of I. And then you want to create another for loop where you start at the start AST and you just go to the end and you just call preprocess var declaration helper. And that's it. Um, 
that's variable declarations are pretty easy, pretty lightweight on the front end, but once we get to actually compiling the types, it's kind of a lot of code. So that's going to be it for today, guys. This is probably a, that was a really short episode. Wow. So as usual, if you guys have any questions, definitely put them in the comment section below. Also, if you guys would love to support the language, definitely head over to the GitHub repository at AndroidFCD slash sharp. And when you do, definitely watch Star and Fork this repository. That's going to give this language a lot more visibility and let other developers know this language exists. Also, if you guys are curious about some of the things that I do on a daily basis, you can head over to the remastered branch. And in there, I write some pretty wordy commits so you can kind of get a gist of what I've been up to without really having to look too much into the code. Also, if you're curious about learning maybe some of the things that I've done in the past to the language or stuff that I'm looking to add in the future, you can head over to the docs folder. And there's two main files. There's a changeless file, which is pretty much everything that I've done in the past in terms of updates and bug fixes. And then, of course, you can look at the roadmap file, which is going to not only contain that information, but also stuff that I'm looking to add in the future. Highly recommend you checking out this file. It gives you lots of insight into the language. So that's going to be it for today, guys. As usual, if you guys are new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.